Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my bias point of view, obviously. And today's theorem is called Pick's theorem. And it's one of these theorems which certainly will not change your life. So it's not a deep theorem in any sense. It's a very silly theorem in some sense, but it's so surprising. It, it really is surprising. It's like, it's a certain question and you think that, okay, that's a natural question. It certainly has some answer. And then the answer is so simple. It's, it's so ridiculously simple that it's actually, again, quite beautiful. So um, as you will, uh, will see, the, the question itself is maybe not the, the whole point. The answer is the whole point. It's, it's really surprisingly simple. It's, it, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, so let's start with a very, very silly question. So what is the area of a square? That sounds like a very silly question. And the only restrictions I would like to add for my square is, well, my square has four endpoints, one, two, three, and four, and I want them to be on a grid. In other words, I want them to be integral. So the square with integral points. Um, so what is the area of the square with integral points? It looks like, it sounds like a restriction that you don't need, but we will see. Anyway, so a square with integral points. I mean, come on, it's a square. So what would you do? You would just count this length here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is really just counting because it has integral points. So I just know that each length here is one, right? So this is six. Very good. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. So the area of this guy is, of course, 36, right? There's really nothing deep. <laughs> it's the area of a square. Okay, come on. Why is this interesting? Well, here comes a silly observation. I could also do the following counting. I could count uh, the number of boundary points on the grid. So these are the blue points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the same seven down here makes 14. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. So seven, five here makes 24. Okay, so I have 24 of those boundary points. Very good. And I could count the green points. So these are the, um, the, the grid points. I have my underlying grid. Remember, the grid points in the middle. And as you can see, this is five times five. Uh, so I have 25 of them. Okay, and I know the area is 36. So here comes the silly calculation. 36 is actually the same as 24, the number of blue points, over 2, plus 25. Ah, that's almost right, minus 1. Okay, this was just a, a, a slightly, slightly strange calculation, right? We just, instead of counting the lengths and of, of, well, the this side and this side, and square it in this case, because it's six times six, I could do the, a, a very stupid count, like count the number of blue points, the ones um, on the grid and on the boundary, and count the number of green points, the one in the middle and on the grid, everything here is on the grid, and do this funny calculation. Blue over two plus green minus one. Okay, um, sure. At this point, I, I don't know. It, it, it seems like just a silly calculation. So here's another silly calculation. Same setup. Now my square is kind of tilted and a little bit smaller. So what do you do here? Well, you could calculate the area as follows. You can say one, two, three. One, two, three. It's still a square. Uh, in this case, the side length is a little bit longer because you're sitting here on the side, right? So you're interested in this length. But you still know that this is one and this is one. So this length is certainly um, just square root of two, right? just by some kind of Pythagorean theorem. And you can still calculate very easily. There, there are zillions of ways to calculate the area of the square, but this is just one. You can still calculate it very easily to be 18. Okay, so area is 18. Okay, very good. Um, it's a square, right? We can calculate the area of the square. So nothing really exciting. It looks, looks extremely silly. And well, you would like to do this, or let me do the same calculation as before. I count the blue points. The points, again, everything is on my grid here, z squared. And so I count the blue points, the points on the boundary, 
And yeah, it's lots hard to see that we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I have 12 blue points. I would count the green points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, I have 13 green points. Very good, so far nothing. And now I do the same calculation. I divide this by two, I add both numbers and I subtract one. So 12 over two plus 13 minus one is again, surprise, surprise, 18. Um, okay, this was some silly calculation with squares on, on a grid. I mean, come on, we are talking about the area of a square here. That's, sure, you can find some, some formula to calculate. It. It's a square, right? So at this point, you just think, okay, this is going to be completely silly. Um, and then I'm showing you this polygon. It's the same setup. I have now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a seven gone. And all my seven boundary points are again on my grid. And I'm interested in the area of this guy, right? And um, if I look at it, uh, okay, it's a slightly strange star shape seven gone. So I would guess, yeah, it is possible to calculate that area, sure. Um, but a priori, I don't know any formula or whatever. I mean, a strange square, uh, a sta strange star shaped seven gone. Okay, so. I, I don't know what to do, actually. I, I would need to do it kind of by hand. Maybe you do something like, okay, it actually secretly sits in this outside square and you have some triangles here that you, that you could remove and then make some calculation to get the area. And here's another square and here's another triangle, something like that. For example, there are, of course, again, zillions of ways of trying to do that. But a priori, just by staring at it, the closed formula, I wouldn't expect such a thing. But turns out, so let's do a calculation. So let's count blue points. So um, uh, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue points on the grid, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's 16. Uh, let's count green points, the interior points on the grid, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Let's do the same calculation. Let's divide this by two. Let's add them and subtract one. And you would get 14. And well, any method, so this is 14. Any method um, I do to calculate this, this area using let's say triangles or the computer or whatever also tells me 14. And now we are kind of in business. So this is weird, right? I mean, okay, I, I, I certainly could believe that if you put a square on the grid and do some funny calculation that you get the right number for the area. But look at this polygon. This looks really weird. And still the same calculation works. So this blue points over two plus green points minus one is the area. That's weird, right? So if you ever, let's say you would be, uh, nobody knows the theorem and you would be about to discover it. As soon as you do this calculation, you know that you're up to something because that's certainly something I wouldn't expect that um, the area of this very, very silly, uh, so, sorry, sorry, little shape, um, that the area of this very strange shape is, is given by such an easy formula is the same formula for this, as for the square. I mean, I find that very puzzling and surprising. Um, so here's the question, silly question, puzzling, surprising, simple answer. So have you have a polygon, and it's a simple polygon. This just means it doesn't intersect itself like this down here. We'll go to this um, in a second. And it also doesn't have any holes. Uh, if you don't want something like that, you will see in a second why you don't. So you don't want those things. Anyway, but other, any, any kind of polygon like, like the star shape certainly works. And the only thing you, ha you have that is uh, as a condition is that it has integer coordinates for its boundary points. And then you can calculate the area by the not very surprising formula by now, uh, blue points over two uh, plus green points minus one, right? So the, what is the point here? The point is, okay, this is a question. Okay, you have a polygon with integer uh, on, the, on a grid. Okay, and you want to know its area. Fine, I think, yeah, that, that's, that's a legit question. That's a completely valid question. 
um, I wouldn't expect a nice answer because you can have pretty crazy polygons sitting on a, on, a, on a grid. Turns out that putting it on a grid gives you this really, really beautiful formula. It, it, I mean, look at the formula. It's ridiculously simple, isn't it? Count blue points, count green points, subtract one. Okay, count blue points half and subtract one. Um, yeah, so the only catch is that you don't want uh, things. Well, you, you want it to bound a disk. So here, this thing bounds a disk. The disk sits in here a little bit like this. Uh, yeah, not too bad. So this bounds a disk, which means things don't have any holes and you don't want self intersection. So if you would do the calculation here, um, you would need to do it for the top and the bottom separately because in the middle you have this point where they intersect and you would double count that point basically. And you would need to double count that point, but you don't uh, just to do the formula. So just, you have to, be, this is just saying you have to be a little bit careful if you apply the formula, but you still have this huge, this huge, this vast family of uh, polygons where you could just use this blue over two plus green minus one formula. Okay, and if you know this theorem, um, you should be, it's not very deep, right? It's, it's, it's a pretty silly question in the end or a pretty simple and silly question. Um, then you should expect that the proof isn't really hard. No, it really isn't. So Wikipedia gives actually several proofs and I, I link also other several proofs in the description. In particular, the one where I stole this idea from, namely from um, proofs from the book, which is a nice book, uh, which is also linked in the description. And yeah, so this, this theorem really has many, many, many proofs. It's some people collect probably proofs of this theorem. So in mathematics, some theorems have a lot of proofs and some people collect proofs of theorems. And this is one of them where people collect proofs because it's, it's so surprisingly simple. And yeah, all the proofs are not very hard. So I just told you what is true. And so you can probably prove it yourself. I give you a hint uh, because I'm sketching a proof on the slide. So let's discuss how it works. So here you have a polygon and it's a pretty crazy polygon, right? So it goes all the way like this uh, here and what up, down, whatever, zigzag zigzagging its way all the way around, whatever. And it sits on the integer grid. So it's kind of in the background. And you would count all the blue points, which is, would be along the, the blue line. And you would count the interior points, which are, um, where's another interior point? Th that's, that's it. These are all the interior points, only two in this case. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty crazy polygon. You would apply the same formula, um, blue over two plus green minus one it would be the area. Right? And how can you prove that? Well, look at it. It's, 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 it's a graph, right? It's a graph on, on, on a grid. And you can simplify or you can, you can uh, subdivide it by adding, by, by, by just um, making everything into triangles. So everything that you see now is a triangle. And of course, you can calculate the area of this whole beast by calculating the number of triangles and their area. And it turns out that <laughs> as soon as you know what to prove, it it's, it's really easy. The only thing you need basically to know is Euler's polyhedron formula, which is this one, um, which you then apply together with a well, with the following easy fact that all of these integral triangles, kind of fun thing, all of these integral triangles, no matter how they look like, even even the distorted one, something like that. So as, as, as soon as the endpoints are on a grid, all of these triangles have area one over two. And then it's a counting problem, right? You just count the number of those triangles and to, uh, to, to count them, you use Euler's polyhedron formula, which also tells you why you want to have a simple um, polygon at the end. Anyway, let me wrap up. So a PIX theorem is, uh, by the way, not very old. It's uh, from the 19th century, which for such a theorem seems to be pretty young, actually. It's about areas of, of polygons, right? Um, anyway, it's a very simple and not very deep uh, kind of statement, which the main point I think is it's, it's surprisingly simple. It's like, what? That's the answer. It's so simple. I can actually remember that answer. I find it very surprising. So uh, let me just say it again. It's just you put any kind of polygon, let's say simple polygon 
on the grid and you can calculate its area by counting the blue boundary points, by counting the green interior points, and blue over two plus green minus one. A very, very simple, a very short and close formula for uh, a problem where at least I wouldn't expect such a simple, such a really, really simple answer. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.